He is salvation. There's no other name. He is our faith. He's our shield of faith. the truth of the life Jesus said. He is the gospel. He is salvation. There's no other name. He is the shield of faith. We cannot be defeated. We cannot be overcome. Welcome to the Light of Truth. We're thrilled that you joined us. What a privilege it is that you came to hear the Word of God. God is doing amazing things and He's speaking to us so we want to listen. So I'm going to send you the Word. I'll see you in just a little bit. I want to talk to you this morning about running to Jesus. Running to Jesus. He's the one we need to run to. It's, it's, the, the title is still, It's Time to Know You're Saved. I mean, we got to know who we are in Him. We, 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 we've got to get our identity in Him. If, if we keep our eyes on ourselves, I've said this so many times, you're going to get discouraged. If you look at you, you're going to be discouraged. Stop looking at you. The Bible does not tell you to look at yourself except to examine yourself to see whether or not you're in faith. To examine yourself to see if, if you've got issues in your life Jesus needs to get rid of. That's the only time you need to be looking at yourself. Other than that, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want your faith to increase, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to overcome struggles, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to Get out of the mess you're in. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Matthew 23 and 37 says this. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, Jesus speaking, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, gather, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. And, and this is so important. Jesus didn't say that drugs kept people away from Him. That's not what He said. He didn't say alcohol kept people away from Him. That's not what Jesus said. He didn't say sexual perversion, hatred, murder, lust, stealing, lying, or other sinful behavior. He didn't say sadness kept people away from Him. He didn't say bitterness kept people away from Him. He didn't say any of the, the, the plethora of, of, of conditions in the human condition. He didn't say any of that is what kept people away from Him. Jesus said what, pe what kept people away from Him is they wouldn't come. They wouldn't come. That's it. In a, it's, that's it in a nutshell. I could shut up right now and you've heard enough. Come to Jesus. Forget about whatever it is that's on your head, in your mind, in your heart, that's in your life, that's an issue, that's a struggle, that's sin, whatever it is. Just run to Jesus. Run to Him. Quit running away from Him. Quit acting like He doesn't want you to come. Stop acting like He's angry at you. He's not angry at you. He's done everything He could possibly do to save you. Run to Him. If you're old and you're tired, run to Jesus. If you're young and you're out of control, run to Jesus. If you're middle-aged and you're in the midst of a crisis, run to Jesus. Maybe you're young and you're tired. Run to Jesus. Run to Him. Run to Him. Run to Him. Stop running away from Him. How oft, He said, I would have gathered thee. How often I would have gathered thy children as a hen does gather her chicks. How often I would have done it. But you would not. Can you imagine the heartbrokenness of Jesus? Knowing what He knows. See, we're still walking by faith. 
We're walking by faith that everybody here is going to get everything that, that comes with salvation. I mean, all the miracles, all the healing, all the deliverance, all the salvation, all the people that we're praying for, all the people that we're believing for. We're believing, we're believing, we're trusting, we're trusting, we're praying, we're fasting. We're doing everything we can within us, but we're still walking by faith. Jesus knows. He knows the transformation that will take place in our lives. If we'll just get under Him. He knows the miraculous that will take place for us. If we'll just run to Him. Can you imagine how broken his heart must be when he watches us run to everything and anything besides him? We run to each other and we run to computers and we run to cell phones and we run to this and we run to that. We run here and we run there. And the one person we need to be running to Anytime we run to the other stuff, we're running away from Him. He's the one and only. He's not the one of many. He's all there is. He's not some of the part. If you want transformation, just run to Jesus. See, people choose not to come to Jesus. There's nothing in your life that can keep you from Jesus except your choice. I don't care how big the struggle is. I don't care how deep the bondage is. Mary Magdalene was a woman possessed by seven devils. And Jesus was more than enough. Amen. The man on the Gadarenes was so possessed by the powers of darkness that, that when Jesus asked the name of the demons, they said, our name is Legion because we are many. And with His Word, those things had to leave and they had to go because they couldn't stay when somebody ran to Jesus. John writes this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that, that doeth trust, or he that doeth truth, cometh to the light. 
that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. See, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. That's why he came. And anybody that wants to can run to the light. Now you can love your deeds. I already talked about it once this morning. Everything else we run to is taking us away from Jesus. He is not, he is not one of many. He's the one and only. He is not, not, he is not the sum of parts. He is the sum of all parts. Hallelujah. If you'll just run to Him, you're going to have some stuff. People think you have to get cleaned up before you run to Jesus. That's insanity. Because you can't get cleaned up enough. You can be the most perfect person that's ever lived on the planet outside of Jesus Christ. And, and you, you are not good enough. You still have to come to Him just like you are. Just as I am without one plea. The problem is we come and get our conscience cleansed, our conscience cleared, and then we just go right back out and corrupt it again. And what God is looking for in us is for us to come and get that conscience cleansed and then to go back out and not violate it. Whatever it is that He's trying to deal with us about, just do what He says. Isn't that what Mary said? Is the wedding in Cana of Galilee? You remember the story? Jesus said, Woman, what are you doing? It's not time yet. She just said, Whatever He says to do, just do it. I'm telling you, those are good words for all of us. Whatever He says to do, just do it. Run to Jesus just like you are. Don't back up. Don't hesitate. Don't let shame, sickness, sadness, bitterness, or envy keep you from Him. You run to Jesus with everything in you. And then when you get there, whatever He tells you to do, just do it. Just do it. There is no condemnation to them that come to Him. There is no condemnation to them that come to Him. He'll clean you up. He'll change your life. He'll transform you. You say, well, I've come to Jesus and I'm still not clean. The bath takes a long time sometimes. I, I, I'm, I'm convinced a lot of people do it better than others. I'm convinced of that. I'm one of them that doesn't do it that good. It's taken a long time for me to get to where I am. But when the day that Jesus saved me, He knew where I was going to be on this day. And He saved me anyway. There's no doubt that Jesus Christ saved me. None at all. I know I'm saved. I know Jesus came into my heart. Do I have struggles? Just like you do. We all have struggles. So we don't worry about that. We just keep going after Jesus and keep running after Jesus. He didn't say you just run after Him one time. He said how often... How often? How often? That's not just speaking to the number of times that He would have done it through the generations, but how many times has Jesus decided, has Jesus determined He wants to pull you under His protection all in your life to how many times? Has He called you back to that safety and that security? That place where shame is washed away. That place where weariness vanishes. That place where the kindness and the goodness of God fills your heart. And you once again experience that peace. Because there's all kinds of things that try to take it from us. There's all kinds of things that try to take our joy. And if, if, if you have never experienced that, if you've never had interruptions in your joy, I commend you. But there has been times in my life where joy unspeakable and full of glory was not my testimony for a few days. But when I run back to Jesus, 
And I find that safety and that security that can only be found in His arms. And I find that peace that passes all understanding. And I find that healing that only He can give. I experience the nearness of His presence. And I know I'm His in spite of me. <laughs> He's never had perfect people to work with. He knew that all along. So get over yourself and run to Jesus. Yes. See, he said, all we've got to do is believe. This is repentance. This truly is repentance. It's, it's that transformation that takes place in our mind where we stop thinking that we've got to get everything right before we come to Him. Where we stop thinking that at some point we're going to be good enough for God. That at that, 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 that point where we lose, we abandon ourselves for Him. We lose all hope in anyone except Him. We place all of our trust in in Him. It is Christ and Christ alone that makes me right with God. It is nothing that I can do. I will never be good enough. I will never do what He wants me to do at that level. I've got to have Jesus. I can't make it without Jesus. That is true repentance. That is where the things begin falling off. That is where the transformation takes place. That is where your appetite for the things of this world just begins to diminish and diminish and diminish. And your appetite for God grows stronger and stronger and stronger. The things of this world grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You've got to stop worrying about it. See, that's what he said right here. He said, because their deeds were evil, because they're afraid that their deeds would be reproved. They're afraid they're going to get exposed. They're afraid that Jesus is going to tell everyone what's wrong with them. And he may. I mean, you just got to understand, he might. He's all going to tell the whole world everything that's wrong with you. But it will be for his glory. And it will not be for your shame. You'll no longer be ashamed of it. Because it will be your testimony. He may never tell a soul. There's a reality that people come to Christ and God never tells anyone what they did. That's a reality. And when God does tell people what you did, it's probably going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So quit worrying about it. Quit being afraid that you're going to be ashamed. See, you're already ashamed. Aren't you tired of it? Why don't you run to Jesus and let Him take your shame? You'll no longer be ashamed. You'll have peace. You'll no longer have remorse and regret. You'll have joy. You'll no longer have the weight of sin in your life. You'll have righteousness. Because that's what happens when we come to Jesus. He takes our sin and makes it right. He doesn't, he doesn't make what you're doing right so you can keep doing it. He takes it away so you no longer do it. He doesn't, he doesn't just dress your shame up. So people can't see it. He removes it from your life. So it's no longer there. I just came here today to encourage somebody. I don't know if you're watching via television. I don't know if you're watching via technology. I don't know if you're in this room right here. I don't have any idea. But I believe with all of my heart the Lord sent me to somebody this morning to encourage you to run to Jesus. 
I don't know what you're going through as we stand to our feet, as we bow our heads, and we get along with the Lord right there where we're at. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're in the middle of. God didn't tell me if you're worried. Oh, my God. Did you tell him what I've done? He has not told me what you've done, so you're in good shape. I can't tell you how many times people have come to me and said, Who told you? Who told me what? Who told you what I did? Nobody. What did you do? Well, you were preaching all about it. I said, Well, I don't know nothing about it. I don't even know what for sure I preached. <laughs> I don't remember. So I wasn't talking to me. And it wasn't me talking. It was the Holy Spirit. And He was speaking to you. So as you bow your heads and close your eyes, I, I'm, not, I'm not here for raising of the hand. I'm, I just want you to isolate yourself with the Lord right now. I don't want you looking at me. I don't want you looking around. I want you just to get in your closet right now, right there where you're at. And I just want you to think, what is it that you're carrying around? Is it shame? Is it regret? Is it remorse? Is it rejection? Is it depression? Is it bitterness? Is it anxiety? Is it brokenness? Is it sickness? Is it sin? Is it unbelief? Is it lust? Is it perversion? Is it lying? Is it stealing? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? Right there, just where you're at, you and Jesus. I want you to renew in your heart. I believe the Lord wants each of us to renew in our heart our passion and our zeal for the Lord. Right there, run to Him. Run to Him in your mind. If, if you're comfortable at the altar, and you want to come and just spend time with the Lord. These altars are open. And you're welcome to come and just run to Jesus. I love the altars. Maybe you're frustrated. Run to Jesus. You could be mad at God. You could be wondering why He hasn't done what you've asked Him to do. Run to Him. Just run to Him. You might be wondering, why am I going through all of this? Just run to Him. You might be sad. You might be grieving. Run to Him. You might be overwhelmed. You might have a boss at work that is just a tyrant. Run to Him. Maybe you have a co-worker that's selling you out, stabbing you in the back. Making you look bad in front of everyone. Run to Jesus. Run to Him. Come on, right there where you're at. Run to Him. Run to Him. He's renewing some hearts today. I heard my wife praying for hearts in this place earlier. And I didn't show her what I was going to talk about. She talked about hearts that were hurting. Maybe you're carrying some pain. Just run to Jesus. Run to Him. Run to Him. Father, I thank You so much. I thank You, Lord. I believe this is what You have me to say today. And I pray for every person in this place. I pray for those that are watching via technology. I pray for those that are listening. I lift them, everyone, to you, God. Lord, you know I can't fix them. You know I can't even help them. But, Lord, you can do all things. And so, Lord, as people are casting their cares upon you because you care for them, as those that are weary and are heavy laden are coming to you looking for your rest, I thank you, God, that you have what they need. I thank you, Lord. 
I thank you for the miracles. I thank you for the miracles. I thank you for healed hearts, God. I love his word. I love his word. His word is alive. And he spoke to us today. He spoke clearly to us. And so we don't want to take it lightly. We need to respond to what he said today. However he spoke to you today, maybe he provoked you, maybe, maybe you're under conviction now. You need to realize that conviction is a good thing. It's a great thing. That means that God is dealing with us. See, none of us have arrived. We're all in this journey, and, and we're not this completed work. You know, and so he's doing a work in each one of our lives. And it's very important that we be open to that work. That's why David said, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. See, there can be things in our lives that we don't even realize. And if we totally shut God off, then, you know, we're in a, we're in a dangerous place. We need to be open and say, God, search my heart. Lord, is there anything in my life that doesn't please you? See, God wants us to be, we're called to be a light in this world. And if we have all kinds of junk in our life, our light is dim and it's blocked and we want our light to shine. And so I pray that you're encouraged today, that you're stirred today. And if you're convicted today, that's a good thing. Ask God to, to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to take from you those things that are not pleasing to him. He's amazing. He loves you. You got to know that. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for conviction. I, I don't know. I, there, must be, there must be someone, Lord, that's listening today that's really struggling with conviction, thinking that, and see, here's the deal. A lot of times the enemy will bring condemnation, and Lord, your word says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And so it's not condemnation. There's a huge difference. Conviction is the Holy Spirit dealing with us. And Lord, I thank you that you're dealing with us, God. And I ask you to cleanse from us, God, all those things, Lord, that are not pleasing to you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, so much for everything that you're doing in all of our lives. And to you, God, be all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Remember, visit us on the website, lfwc.us. God bless you. We'll see you next time.